Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis, from the writings of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today, Ambition, from the Mother. Dangers and difficulties come in when people take up yoga not for the sake of the divine, but because they want to acquire power and under the guise of yoga, seek to satisfy some ambition. If you cannot get rid of ambition, do not touch the thing. It is a fire that burns. Ambition has been the undoing of many yogis. That canker can hide long. Many people start on the path without any sense of it. But when they get powers, their ambition rises up all the more violently because it had not been thrown out in the beginning. One of the commonest forms of ambition is the idea of service to humanity. All attachment to such service or work is a sign of personal ambition. Question. Why do you say that this is ambition? Mother. Why do you want to serve humanity? What is your idea? It is ambition. It is in order to become a great man among men. It is difficult to understand. I can see that. I don't think that humanity is happier than it was before, nor that there has been a great improvement. All this mostly gives you the feeling, I am something. That's what I call ambition. If these very people who are ready to give money for schools were told that there was a divine work to be done, that the divine had decided to do it in this particular way, even if they are convinced that it is indeed the divine's work, they refuse to give anything, for this is not a recognized form of beneficence. One doesn't have the satisfaction of having done something good. This is what I call ambition. I had instances of people who could give lakhs of rupees to open a hospital. For that gives them the satisfaction of doing something great, noble, generous. They glorify themselves. That's what I call ambition. When the disciple became editor of Purudhaj, he began writing stories and articles for the journal. But as he explained to the mother, he was afraid that his head would get swollen if his old ambition of becoming a great writer rose up again. Mother, behind all ambitions, there is a truth waiting the opportune time to manifest. Now that the ambition is gone, it is time for the truth, the capacities and abilities to manifest. Take great care not to become swollen, but I am with you, helping you, in order to do something that may be interesting. With love and blessings, 1962. Mother. The guru who believes that he has a great truth to teach to humanity and who wants many disciples and who feels uncomfortable when the disciples go away or who seizes on anybody that comes and tries to make him a disciple is evidently following nothing but his ambition. Disciple. We should always be on our guard against the interference of the ego, shouldn't we, Mother? Mother. Certainly, this is correct. 
Ambition is always a source of disturbance and confusion. 16 May 1934 Detaching oneself from the ignorant actions of the mind and vital, and from any kind of ambition, and allowing the Divine Mother to work according to her own will, one can have inner as well as outer peace and happiness. And this, I think, is the way one can serve the Mother gratefully and sincerely. Is this not so, Mother? Certainly, action without ambition and egoistic calculation is the condition of peace and felicity, both inner and outer. From Sri Aurobindo, many men are not after happiness and do not believe it is the true aim of life. It is the physical vital that seeks after happiness. The bigger vital is ready to sacrifice it in order to satisfy its passions, search for power, ambition, fame, or any other motive. All ambition, pride, and vanity must disappear from the thoughts and the feelings. <clears throat> there must be no seeking now or in the future for place, position, or prestige. No stipulation for a high seat among the elect. No demand for a special closeness to the mother. No claim or assertion of right. No attempt to thrust yourself between her and others. No endeavor to intercept what she is giving to them or to share in it. No imposing of yourself on her or on other sadaks. The egocentric man feels and takes things as they affect him. Does this please me or displease, give me gladness or pain, flatter my pride, vanity, ambition, or hurt it, satisfy my desires or thwart them, etc.? Ambition and vanity are things so natural to the human consciousness. They have even their use in ordinary life. That it is quite natural that at first they should enter into the sadhana also and linger even when they are rejected, but they have to be pushed out before one is far on the path. Otherwise, they are very dangerous attendants and can pervert both aspiration and siddhi. Ambition is always a force of the vital. Suggestions of ambition, etc., are always born in the vital mind or, as it might be called, the mind of the vital. And from there, they rush up to the thinking mind and claim its assent and the sanction of the mental will. When the thinking mind gets clouded by the uprush, it is carried away and gives its assent. The thinking mind, reason, has always to remain unmoved above and judge what is right, without being caught and carried away by the vital. Those who fall, fall not because of the attacks of the vital forces, but because they put themselves on the side of the hostile force and prefer a vital ambition or desire, ambition, vanity, lust, etc., to the spiritual city. Great or dazzling or small in their field, ambition is ambition. 
and it is necessary for most for an energetic action. What is the use of calling a thing a vice when it is small and glorifying it when it is big? Namaste.